Hello, St. Joan of Arc families, and welcome. Let's get ready to open our hearts to God with a centering breath. Take a big breath in and let it out. And let yourself rest in God's love. Today's gospel is a prayer. As Jesus gets ready to leave his friends, he asks God to protect us. And he asks us to be true to God so that we may be united as one. United as one. What can we do to bring ourselves together as one? Let's start our celebration with the words of Jan Richardson. Jesus' prayer at his departure, which is a blessing, is part of Jesus' final gift to his friends. In much the same way that Jesus tells Mary Magdalene on Easter morning not to hold on to him, Jesus at the Last Supper urges his disciples, his friends, to grow up. He invites them to enter into a new relationship with him that will no longer depend on his physical presence, but will rely instead on trusting in his love and growing into the people and the community that Christ has called them to become. It is time for them to become his body, to continue his transforming work in the world that he has physically left, but has not abandoned. Love can build a bridge between your heart and mine Love can build a bridge Don't you think it's time Don't you think it's time Please join in our opening prayer Jesus, our teacher and brother, you have called us your friends. Let us live in your friendship, bringing your joy and your peace to our world. Amen. Our opening song asks some questions to think about with our hearts. How many years will some mountains exist Before they are washed to the sea? How many years must some people exist Before they're allowed to be free? How many times can we all turn our heads Pretending we just do not see The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind The answer is blowing in the wind How many times must we all look up
Our first reading is from the first letter of John. Dear friends, since God loves us so much, we must love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and God's love is truly in our hearts. God's Spirit has been given to us. That is how we know that we are one with God, as God is one with us. Whoever knows that Jesus is the Son of God is living in God. For God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. Our second reading is from Psalm 103. Please sing the response together. This day was made by you, O God, sing Alleluia. The love of our God is everlasting, showering blessings on all people, bringing justice to all who are oppressed. This day was made by you, O God, sing Alleluia. Give thanks to our God, people of every nation. Sing out your praise, for our God has made us one. This day was made by you, God, sing Alleluia. This is the Word of God. Our Gospel song reminds us about living in joy. We've got that joy, 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 joy down in our hearts, down in our hearts. Down in our hearts, we've got that joy, 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 joy Down in our hearts, down in our hearts to stay We've got that love of justice Down in our hearts, down in our hearts Down in our hearts, we've got that love of justice Down in our hearts, down in our hearts to stay We've got our God who loves us down in our hearts, down in our hearts, down in our hearts. We've got our God who loves us down in our hearts, down in our hearts to stay. This is a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed, Most holy God, protect these people you have given to me. Keep them true to your name so that they may be united as one just as you and I are one. Since I have been with them, I have taken care of them and I have kept them true to you. Now I am coming to you. But while I am still with them, I am saying all of these things so that they may be completely filled with my joy. I taught them about you, but the world is against them because they believe in you. Protect them from all harm. Your word is truth. Make them holy by keeping them true to your word. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus said to God, Protect these people you have given to me. Keep them true to your name, so they may be united as one, just as you and I are one. With this prayer humming in your ears, 
our question will appear. Let's read it together. What, what can, can we, we do to live in God's, God's love? In our first reading, John tells us that although no one has ever seen God, we can know God through Jesus. And what Jesus has taught us is that God is love. Since God loves us so much, we must in turn love one another. Because when we live in love, we live in God. In the Gospel, Jesus is saying a final goodbye to his friends. His goodbye is in the form of a prayer, a blessing on his friends as he leaves them. His prayer is that we all live as one. Jesus knows he leaves his friends in a difficult place. Then, as now, Jesus' friends will have to work hard against enormous injustice and hate in order to create a world where everyone is united. As we know, it's not easy to work for justice. It's tiring, often unpopular, and sometimes downright scary. Jesus, our always loving teacher, is asking God to protect us as we take on this challenge. This blessing is Jesus' final gift to his friends. He's sharing it with us so that we may be completely filled with his joy. Again, just before he is arrested and goes to his death, Jesus wants us to share in his joy. Not his law or his rules, but his joy. We will have his joy if we live in his love by loving one another. It's up to us. As Jesus says goodbye, he leaves it in our hands. Remember the words of Jan Richardson? It is time for the disciples to become Jesus' body, to continue his transforming work in the world, a world that he has physically left, but has never abandoned. Jesus' body will be gone but his spirit and his joy will always be there for us if we open our hearts and take up his work. And according to this gospel, Jesus' work is the unity of all people. That's his prayer for us. So what does unity really mean? Does it mean that everyone has to be the same? have the same beliefs, act the same, love the same, look the same? Well, we know Jesus loved diversity. He'd be the last one to ask us to be less than ourselves. Jesus is asking us to create unity with God, the creator or parent, by following the teachings of the Son. For Jesus, it's all about relationships. Once we are really united with God by living our lives based on the teachings of Jesus, we will treat all people with respect and fairness, and we will be united as one. And yes, that's a tall order, a lifelong journey. Right now, we are living in a world that has enormous injustice. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. And yet, John tells us that God is love. And when we live in love, we live in God. Jesus tells us that God so loves this difficult world and so loves each of us imperfect people. A bit later in Jesus' prayer, he says that the disciples are God's gift to him. Flawed people who will not always understand or always do what is right, 
yet we are God's gift to Jesus. This love is so big and endless and incomprehensible, and it is unifying. It can make us one. Jesus' prayer for us is that we may have the joy of being united as one. And we are one when we live in God's love. So our question is, what can we do to live in God's love? Today we have a story for you, Freedom Summer, written by Deborah Wiles, and illustrated by Jerome Lagarigue, about two boys who find a way to let their love rise above the hatred all around them. Our reader is J.P. Fitzgibbons. John Henry Waddell is my best friend. His mama works for my mama. Her name is Annie Mae. Every morning at 8 o'clock, Annie Mae steps off the county bus and walks up the long hill to my house. If it's summer, John Henry is step, step, stepping it right beside her. We like to help Annie Mae. We shell butter beans. We sweep the front porch. We let the cats in, then chase the cats out of the house until Annie Mae says, Shoo! Enough of you two! Go play! We shoot marbles in the dirt until we're too hot to be alive. Then we yell, Last one in is a rotten egg! And run straight for Fiddler's Creek. John Henry swims better than anybody I know. He crawls like a catfish, blows bubbles like a swamp monster, but he doesn't swim in the town pool with me. He's not allowed. So we dam the creek with rocks and sticks to make a swimming spot, then holler and jump in wearing only our skin. John Henry's skin is the color of browned butter. He smells like pine needles after a good rain. My skin is the color of the pale moths that dance around the porch light at night. John Henry says I smell like a just-washed sock. This means war, I shout. We churn that water into a white hurricane and laugh until our sides hurt. Then we float on our backs and spout like whales. I'm going to be a fireman when I grow up, I say. Me too, says John Henry. I have two nickels for ice pops, so we put on our clothes and walk to town. John Henry doesn't come with me through the front door of Mr. Mason's general store. He's not allowed. How are you doing, young Joe? asks Mr. Mason. He winks and says, You gonna eat these all by yourself? My heart does a quick beat. I got one for a friend, I say, and scoot out the door. Yes, sir, it's mighty hot out there, Mr. Mason calls after me. I love ice pops, says John Henry. Me too, I say. (laughs) Annie Mae makes dinner for my family every night. She creams the corn and rolls the biscuits. Daddy stirs his iced tea and says, The town pool opens tomorrow to everybody under the sun, no matter what color. That's the new law, Mama tells me. She heaps my plate with peas and says, It's the way it's going to be now, everybody together. Lunch counters, restrooms, drinking fountains, too. I wiggle in my chair like a doodlebug. I got to be excused, I shout, and I run into the kitchen to tell John Henry. I'm going to swim in the town pool, he hollers. Is it deep? Real deep, I tell him. And the water's so clear, you can jump to the bottom and open your eyes and still see. Let's be the first ones there says John Henry. I'll bring my good luck nickel and we can dive for it. Next morning, as soon as the sun peeks into the sky, here comes my best friend, John Henry Waddell, run, run, running to meet me. Let's go, he yells. I got my nickel. And I run right with him all the way to town swimming pool. 
we race each other over that last hill and we stop. County dump trucks are here. They grind and back up to the empty pool. Workers rake steam and asphalt into the hole where sparkling clean water used to be. One of them is John Henry's big brother, Will Rogers. We start to call to him what happened, but he sees us first and points back on down the road. It means get on home. But our feet feel stuck. We can't budge. So we hunker in the tall weeds and watch all morning until the pool is filled with hot, spongy tar. Smoky steam rises in the air. Workers tie planks to their shoes and stomp on the blacktop to make it smooth. Will Roger heaves his shovel into the back of an empty truck and climbs up with the other workers. His face is like a storm cloud, and I know this job has made him angry. Let's go! A boss man shouts, and the truck's rumble slam down the road. It's so quiet now we can hear the breeze whisper through the grass. We sit on the diving board and stare at the tops of the silver ladders sticking up from the tar. My heart beats hard in my chest. John Henry's voice shakes. White folks don't want colored folks in their pool. You're wrong, John Henry, I say. But I know he's right. Let's go back to Fiddler's Creek, I say. I didn't want to swim in this old pool anyway. John Henry's eyes fill up with angry tears. I did, he says. I wanted to swim in this pool. I want to do everything you can do. I don't know what to say, but as we walk back to town, my head starts to pop with new ideas. I want to go to the Dairy Dip with John Henry, sit down and share root beer floats. I want us to go to the picture show, buy popcorn and watch the movie together. I want to see this town with John Henry's eyes. We stop in front of Mr. Mason's store. I jam my hands into my pockets while my mind searches for words to put with my new ideas. My fingers close around two nickels. Want to get an ice pop? John Henry wipes his eyes and takes a breath. I want to pick it out myself. I swallow hard and my heart says yes. Let's do that, I say. I give John Henry one of my nickels. He shakes his head. I got my own. We look at each other. Then we walk through the front door together. Our story is fiction, but it's based on true events. In 1964, a civil rights act became law that declared, among other things, that all Americans had the right to enjoy public places, no matter their skin color. Many Southern businesses closed in protest, including the town pool where the author used to swim. Joe and John Henry are best friends. It doesn't matter to them that one is black and one is white, but it does matter in their town. It takes great courage and love, but the boys decide to do what is right. What seems like a small act, walking together into a newly integrated space, is actually a huge step toward change. As they step together through the front door of Mr. Mason's general store, they follow in Jesus' footsteps toward justice and freedom.
Today our prayers of the people come from James Bell. Please respond to each with, God, hear us. My name is James Bell and I'm 11 years old. We pray that all the people who can get the vaccine get it while they can. We pray to God. God, hear us. We pray that all the people make smart choices and help to help end the pandemic faster. We pray to God. God, hear us. Let us be filled with God's joy by working to bring all people together as one. We pray to God. God, God hear us. Our loving teacher Jesus brought the peace of God to all of us. Let's share his peace with each other. Please either turn to one you are sitting with or hold someone in your heart and say to them, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Inspired by Jesus, let's end with a blessing. God of all people, bless your children. Protect us from the harm of hatred, of violence, and of blindness. And hold us always in your light. Amen. Before we close, we have an announcement. Are you missing St. Joan of Arc? We miss you. Our next drive through is Saturday, May 22nd, from 10 to 11 a.m. in the St. Joan of Arc parking lot. Bring much-needed donations to our community food shelf, pick up information on our programs and ministries, and wave to staff on your way through. Now I'd like to thank our team who created this celebration. J.P. Fitzgibbons for bringing us a story of Freedom Summer, James Bell for offering his prayers, Steve Kramer for leading our song, Richard Dodson for reading and making our video, and thanks to all of you for sharing in our reflection. Don't miss next week when we celebrate Pentecost. Until then, may you stay well and live blessed. Now let's close our prayer with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Creator, the Son, our Teacher, and the Holy Spirit of love in the world. Amen. With our final song, let's sing out that we're all one. Grab a percussion instrument and let's go. Somos la familia de Dios. Sí. Somos la familia de Dios. Y nos cuidamos como hermanos. Somos la familia de Dios. We are the family of God. Yes. We are the family of God. And we one.